A new law banning gender-changing care for minors is going into effect today in Texas. The state's uh, high court is allowing the law to proceed after a lo lower court issued a temporary injunction. Texas Congressman Dan Crenshaw says the gender-affirming care is actually pseudoscience and has introduced a bill to block funding for any children's hospital that provides the procedure to minors. Can you please explain? Welcome to you, sir. Yeah, hi, thanks for having me. So uh, there's, there's a couple parts to this. First, let's start with the so-called science of transitioning a minor into a different gender. Uh, there, there, there is no science backing that up. There's no science showing that there's these benefits associated with, with doing these therapies, whether that's puberty blockers, hormone therapy, or actual surgical interventions. In fact, it's quite the opposite. All of the systematic reviews, which is the, the gold standard of evidence-based care, which looks at all of the different studies and puts them together and analyzes them properly, show that there's little to no evidence that there's any benefits to this whatsoever. So, so, you're, so you're imposing a very, very drastic change, a physiological permanent change on a child, and you can't show any benefits. That's a really big problem. So what we've done at the federal levels, I've introduced a bill, and we've gotten it to the House floor. We'll have that debate on the House floor soon mm -hmm. on whether we're going to fund children's hospitals programs, their, their, their GME programs, graduate medical education programs, if they're doing these kind of transitions. And so, look, that's how you fight in a divided government. You've got to, you've got to take yeah. must-pass bills like this one, the funding for these hospitals, and you've got to attach our own, our own values to it. And that's what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, at last count, that that amount of money was more than fifteen billion dollars in continuing medical, medical education or graduate medical education. So that's a significant amount of money. Uh, we wonder about statistics on gender dysphoria. The British Medical Journal said this very recently. More adolescents with no history of gender dysphoria are presenting at gender clinics. For example, a recent analysis of insurance claims found that nearly 18,000 U.S. minors began taking puberty blockers or hormones from 2017 to 2021, with that number rising each year. What do you, Congressman, believe is behind this rise? Well, look, and there was another study that showed if you know somebody who's transgender, then you're, I think, seven times more likely to identify as such. And look, it's, you, it, it, you don't want to belittle the, the issue too much, but it is kind of like a trend, right? Just like you see people wearing something, you want to wear the same thing. You see people doing something, you want to do the same thing. And in this case, it's more psychological. You feel uh, like teenage angst. You feel anxiety, depression, whatever you're feeling at that moment in your life, and you're looking for a reason why. And so then people start looking on the Internet, and so this is where the Internet comes in and social media comes in, and it says, look, this is why you might be feeling this way. And then you go down this rabbit hole, you go down this path, and more and more people start um, to, 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 to identify as such. Um, it becomes the explanation that they were looking for. Mm -hmm. It becomes the causality that they were looking for when it, really, when it really wasn't. And so it has become this sort of social contagion, really fueled by social media and, of course, easy access to the Internet. And a lot of groups who are telling people very dishonest things, like, hey, there's only a 1% chance that you'll regret it. That's, that's, those are not well-done studies. These are, these, are, these, are, these are bogus studies that doctors are telling parents and children, and, and people need to know about this. Well, perhaps that's one perspective. There's also the perspective of those who have um, gone through these changes. And um, one notable um, piece of testimony was from Chloe Cole on the consequences she suffered from gender transition. Listen. My voice will forever be deeper, my jawline sharper, my nose longer, my bone structure um, permanently masculinized, my Adam's apple more prominent, my fertility unknown. I look in the mirror sometimes and I feel like a monster. And considering that and so many other voices out there who have, who have gone on the record saying they severely regret their decision to, um, to change, why do you believe those who support this so much aren't willing to listen? I, I, I wish I knew the answer to that. People ask me all the time, do your Democrat colleagues really believe the things that they're saying? Do they quietly, after, after the hearing is over, say to you, oh, man, like I, I don't know how we got backed into this corner? Because, you know, they didn't believe this stuff 10 years ago. Nobody did. Nobody thought it was a good idea to do a double mastectomy on a 12-year-old girl 10 years ago. 
Just like now, we don't believe that lobotomies are okay for mental health care or, or electroshock therapy. And this is, this is certainly in that category. It's become a social contagion, but also a political contagion. And I know Chloe. I've interviewed Chloe. Mm -hmm. and, and she's one of those people who's, who doctors told her parents. They lied to her parents. They used pseudoscience studies and told her parents that there was only a 1% chance that she'd regret it. That was based in, that was based in a totally bogus study. They took yeah. advantage of her. They took advantage of her parents. They make it seem like this is the obvious thing to do. Oh, you have anxiety? You must be a different gender. That's crazy. And it's time for us to just speak out and say it's crazy. Mm. Chloe, Chloe also says her parents were, were told, given, given her mental state of mind, you're either going to end up with a dead daughter or a transgender boy. Uh, so she says that she was pressured into it's, it. It's, um, it's malpractice. Yeah. Uh, Congressman, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. It's always a... Uh, Thank you, for me. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.